Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so, so much for being here with us this evening. Um, my name is Amy Hepstetler. I'm the Assistant Director for Diversity and Outreach at the University of Louisville. And tonight we are going to be Thinking College Now with a fantastic panel of um, high school professional school counselors, as well as some of our colleagues from um, the college side as well, to talk about communicating with colleges what that means, um, what it might look like for you as you're kind of moving through this process. Um, if you all want, feel free to drop in the chat um, what year you are this year. We're always excited to see new faces and kind of get connected with students. Um, so let us know, are you a freshman? Are you a sophomore, junior? Um, let us know where you're coming from as well. If you wanna drop in, um, are you coming from Kentucky? Are you coming from Indiana? Um, are you coming from Florida, California, wherever? We're excited to have you um, here this evening. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be recording this session this evening. So if you have any friends that maybe uh, missed the session and want to um, get on later um, or watch for us later, you absolutely can do that. It'll be on our U of L YouTube channel. Um, excited um, to have that option as well. All right, we've got Louisville in the house. You got Ohio in the house, Indiana, fantastic. Um, thank you all so, so much. Illinois, awesome. We've got, um, we're Illinois, excited to have you all that. here. Cool. <laughs> we've got a great group this evening. Um, we also have a fantastic panel for you all. Um, and I will go ahead and let them introduce themselves, um, where they work and their positions there. And then we will get, we'll get um, started. This is really, um, hopefully this will just be a conversation um, with, you know, our, our panelists. Um, so make sure, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to just raise your hand. So everybody, if you wanna try, take a second and try to raise your hand. Yes, we're doing it. Yes, okay. <laughs> Everyone raise your hand. Um, so if you do have any questions, go ahead and raise that hand or just drop it in chat and I will be um, keeping track of that um, and I will make sure to answer your question there. So Karina, let's start with you. If you will introduce yourself and um, what you do. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Karina Bruce. I am an Assistant Director of Admission at Center College. Um, and right now I work with a lot of students from Western Kentucky and then I have a lot of out of state. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Thanks Karina. Billy? Hello everybody, uh, my name is Billy Sarge. I'm a high school counselor from St. Henry District High School in Northern Kentucky. Uh, my role there at the school is actually I'm the director of enrollment, so I work with middle school students and high school transfers to help them enroll at the high school, and then also I am the counselor for the juniors as well. Kendrick? Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Kendrick Quisenberry. I work at Murray State University, and I'm our associate director of recruitment at the university, so great to be here with you guys tonight. And last but certainly not least, Ms. Carrie Foster. Good evening. Um, I am Carrie Foster. I'm the Director of College Counseling at St. Xavier High School in Louisville, Kentucky. Awesome. Thank you all. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Um, I know we're going to have some great, great questions for you. Um, so again, um, I'll kind of give it a second for anyone who has any questions. I do have some um, pre-submitted questions for our panelists. Um, so I can certainly kick us off while you all are racking your beautiful brains um, for fantastic questions for this, uh, this group. Um, but again, feel free to drop those in the chat or um, like I said, raise your hand and, and we'll make sure that we get to, to them there. Um, the first question that, that has come in is for Kendrick and Karina. And um, the question is, you know, we're talking about communication. Right. So how should students expect to be communicated with from colleges and when should they start to expect communications from colleges? I don't mind starting, Karina, and then if you need to fill anything in or want to jump in, feel free to. So first off, uh, in your guys' cases, 
how a lot of communication is going to start for you guys through college is that when you're at college fairs or you're speaking to all these representatives, a lot of times uh, they're going to ask for maybe your phone number. You're going to fill out an information card. You may scan a uh, what's called a QR, a QRM card uh, codes or whatever those are as well. Uh, and that's usually going to put you on the mailing list for colleges. Then you'll start receiving emails and mailings and everything from those universities, especially when you're like a sophomore, uh, freshman, sophomore, and you start getting those informations. The number one way colleges are communicating with students right now, though, is via email, probably. So all of you guys have emails and everything. And one thing that we always suggest to our students uh, at Murray is that uh, a good idea for you guys, maybe you create a separate email and have that email strictly just for college stuff. So nothing is coming to it, but uh, information from all these colleges you sign up with and only give that email out to other colleges that way. So you know, that's just all college. So when you see that email may have 10 new items in it, you know, it's from all these different colleges you signed up to get information from and you can sort through with that route. A lot of times students use their high school emails and what happens a lot with those high school emails is that you may lose contact with those after you leave that high school or anything along those lines. So it's just a lot easier for a lot of students if they use that strictly uh, created new email for themselves. So that's a uh, helpful tip that I like to share with students, maybe possibly in your guys' situation right now, creating that new email that you just use for college information. Karina, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. I think right now, especially emails are really big. Um, so definitely make sure that you're keeping up with your email. So if you do decide to do the second email like Kendrick was talking about, it is a really good idea um, because most of the time you do get a lot of emails from a lot of different colleges all throughout the day, pretty much. Um, so make sure that you're also constantly on that email that you're going through, you're filtering out. Um, and then also I would say too that a lot of colleges are also beginning to text students. So if you're comfortable being texted by some colleges, make sure that you opt into that because a lot of times you do have to give the colleges permission before they can actually text you. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, that's perfectly fine. But I know that some students, they prefer texting. They think it might be a little bit easier. Um, and especially when you get down into actually completing applications, if you're missing anything on your application, we can text it to you. Even if it's just a quick question that you have for us, um, you can always text us because sometimes um, for me and Kendrick, for example, on the college side, during kind of the busy season, as we call it for us, our emails do get really, really busy. So if you have like a really quick question that you just want to ask us, sometimes using that texting feature, I think is also a really good option. If, like I said, if you're comfortable with doing that. Awesome. Thank you all. And this question is for Carrie and Billy. So from the high school perspective, so from professional school counselors, um, how do you see yourselves facilitating communication between students and college counselors? You know, kind of what do you see your role um, when you support, support these students who are thinking about college? Um, thank you, Billy. I, I think that um, personally, I think it, it may depend on uh, the caseload that the college counselor at your school has. So that could be a conversation that you want to have with your college counselor or whoever you speak to in this particular year. Um, ask them, you know, how do, how do I get in contact with universities? If they have 500 students they're working with, that's a little bit different if they have 100 students that they're working with. Um, in my particular situation, it is my role to help the students um, contact the universities and help and help them navigate that process. Um, the panel on here tonight uh, gets countless emails from me. Ms. Hofstadler, I think got, I don't know, maybe 10 emails from me today alone. <laughs> so, um, but that is my particular situation um, in my role in my school. So I think, especially for those of you are on here that are underclassmen, sophomores and juniors, it's a great opportunity for you to introduce yourself to your counseling office if you haven't. 
and find out what that role is with your counselor. And they may um, help you do that. They may hand you a business card and say, contact them and let us know if you have questions. Whatever their role is, it's a great opportunity to knock on the door, get an appointment, sign up for appointment and ask those questions. Yeah, uh, just to echo what Carrie had said, you know, students, the one thing that you need to make sure that you do is whenever college reps are coming to your campus, which I know this year has been kind of a unique year, but anytime that college reps are doing a virtual presentation or they're in person, I think it's a really good idea for you to make sure that you find a way to make time in your schedule to meet with them. Uh, the college reps are the ones that are going to be reviewing your application for admission in a lot of cases. Uh, they might be the one that would be the voice for you uh, to be able to uh, talk to a scholarship committee, be able to help you out, uh, connect you with a college professor to tell you more about a certain program. Uh, they are the guide to be able to help you get through uh, this college search and application process. Uh, and for us, <clears throat> excuse me, as high school counselors, we really do rely on the college reps to be able to share that information with us and be able to give that to you. Uh, we are around you every single day. Uh, we're always on your high school campus as high school counselors, the college reps aren't. So they really do rely on us to be a voice for them. So we really do stay connected to, you know, Karina and Kendrick and all these other college reps that are looking to, to be able to chat with you. Um, you know, Carrie is also right in saying that the caseload of the high school counselor kind of determines um, if they require meetings with each of the students or they just wait for students to be able to sign up and meet with them. Even though your counselor students might be busy, they will make time for you. You go ahead and schedule an appointment with the secretary, the counselor, they will find time to be able to meet with you and help you navigate through this process. So don't always wait for a counselor to come to you. Make sure that you make time and you go to them and they will meet with you. And I just wanna add, Billy, thank you for saying that. Um, I work at a, at a large high school and I always tell my students, when you're in front of me, your questions are my priority, but you have to get in front of me. Um, if you are out here today in the virtual world and you're from a large high school, chances are that's probably how it has to be for your college counselor. Um, if you get in front of them, they will help you. If you are in a small high school, like Billy said, um, check check to see if there are um, requirements and how you are, are signed up to see them. Um, but if you get in front of them, they will want to help you. Yeah, and Carrie, like, for example, like my school, we have 450 kids in the whole school. How many do you have? My, in the whole school, about 1,181 or 1,200. So the idea is that in order for some counselors to be able to meet with each student individually with a, a, a population that large, it's difficult, but Karen, the rest of the counseling staff at our high school, they're excellent in what they do. They're very knowledgeable. They're able to work with students through that process. And like I said, they'll make time for them. Me at my high school, for example, I'm required to meet with every single junior before the end of the school year. And that's not realistic for some schools. You know what I mean? So that's why like we really make sure that you know, we work with you, we would call the actual college rep and ask some questions if we don't know the answers, go to their websites and things like that. Carrie, I'm sure that you work with students on all pieces of the application process. Um, so yeah, students, make sure that you do reach out to your counselor, they will work with you. All right, you all, we've had a great question drop, in, drop into the chat. Um, and I think that we're gonna kind of continue this a little bit. Um, so Evan wants to know what ways can I get in touch with and connect with a counselor during COVID? And so the student is still learning virtually um, and I would even extend it out, right? So some of us are lucky in our, in our you know, high school, our counseling offices are a little bit smaller, some are bigger. So maybe what are some ways um, that they can connect with you, Kendrick and Karina, and what are some ways that maybe they should focus on connecting with their um, professional school counselor? You all started that conversation, uh, Billy and, and um, Carrie. So yeah, how else could you think that they would wanna get in touch with you all? Well, Evan, you know, I, I'll just add on to what I was saying is that, you know, we do check our emails often. Um, you know, I tell students, you know, give me a 24 hour window to be able to reply to you. 
Um, you know, some counselors might say, give me 48 hours, <laughs> you know, because if Amy's getting 10 emails from Carrie in one day, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it might be Amy's not getting only emails from Carrie. She's getting emails from Kendrick and Karina too. So um, the, the idea is that, you know, email the counselor and ask them, you know, when would your schedule be open to be able to do that? I think some students who are learning virtually, they might only have school for a certain number of hours and then counselors have more office hours. Um, uh, so I would do that. Uh, the other thing is too is honestly, if you can't get a hold of your counselor by email, I would make sure that you make a phone call to the counseling office if they're there in person. Um, I hate to say it, but if that doesn't work either, then you might have to ask mom or dad <laughs> to give a call to be able to try to arrange that and make that happen. But um, that would be the best way of doing that in like a Google Meet or, or Zoom, whatever your school uh, allows for that virtual experience. I would totally do that. And one of the other things that you could probably ask your counselor to do is to say, hey, as a part of this meeting, is there a way that you can be able to um, do a, a three-way call and be able to get a college rep to be able to be a part of that too, saying, hey, I'm really interested in Center College. Uh, Ms. Foster, do you think that you can be able to reach out to Karina and she would be able to block off time and then Carrie can be able to try to arrange that for, for a student? So that's just my take. Yes, I, I, all the above. I think if you're trying to reach your college counselor in your high school, um, I think someone in that counseling office should know what the procedures are for your high school to do that. Whether that is the college counselor or the person that answers the phone, somebody should know those procedures. At my particular school, I, I set a time limit in the evening. I answer email to 8 p.m during the busy season um, and my students know that and they have also have a 24 hour window. But um, when it comes to emailing the college representatives, I do tell my students to give it a, you know, at least two days because um, the colleges are getting bombarded from all over the place. But um, again, we are fortunate to be in school, but um, I would say during the virtual season, um, I anticipated emails from my students and um, I would say 24, 48 hours that you would anticipate a reply from your college counselor. And truly, if you're sitting out there like, I don't even know who to email, there has got to be someone that you can call in either the front office of your school or the guidance office of your school. And you can say your first and last name and who you contact and they will give you that information. And it's okay if you don't know, it's okay. I'd rather have someone ask who I am than sit and wonder who I am. And I would say too, if you've already kind of started your college search, um, I would also say to take advantage of your college counselors that are that you're working with, so the college reps, um, because I know there may be some students who maybe don't have an actual college counselor, so maybe they just have like a professional school counselor, maybe they just seem really busy. So even if maybe it's taking a little bit more time to get in touch with your school counselor, you can always reach out to a college rep. Um, I know I'm probably speaking for myself and maybe Kendrick when I say um, most of the time, even if you contact us and you say, hey, I just need to know what I need to do, just need some guidance on how the application process works, anything like that, and we'll get you in the right direction. Um, and even if you contact me and you're like, hey, Karina, I think I'm interested in Center, but I think I'm also interested in U of L or Murray State. Well, a lot of times too, depending on where you're applying to, or where you're interested in, a lot of times we as the college reps pretty much know who our colleagues are. So we can also get you in touch with whoever it is that you need to get in contact with. So I think that's also another option as well. If you're having some issues getting in touch with your school counselor, try and reach out to your college rep, maybe like I said, um, a school that you're interested in or anything along those lines. And either way, between your school counselor and between the college reps, um, we'll make sure that you get in contact with someone who can help you get started with that process. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree with what Karina just stated. And uh, as you guys are in high school right now, again, uh, 
I can remember too, especially as sophomores, and I said we had some freshmen, sophomores, and a couple of juniors. But as a sophomore and freshman, you may not have any idea at that school who deals with college things right now. Mm -hmm. You're just worried about your normal counselor, maybe who helps you with your schedule or anything. Uh, your teachers may know too as well. So if you just feel comfortable with the teacher, just uh, your math teacher or whatever teacher it is, say, hey, do you have any chance? And they can find the answers out for you too. Just use your resources at all your schools and everything, because that's going to be, uh, everyone's here to help you throughout this process. I think uh, what I see with a lot of students, the number one uh, deterior for a lot of students with college is uh, just not speaking up for themselves. Again, uh, depending on different schools, some schools are blessed to where they have multiple uh, counselors that deal with a lot of things. But if you're in, uh, I can speak for Louisville more so because that's the area I cover. Again, there are some schools in Louisville where one person is trying to deal with three, 400 students. And again, it's easy to see why they may not be as accessible to you. But uh, talk to the college reps, talk to teachers and everybody, because everyone's going to be willing to pull together and help. And uh, sometimes I may have to email a certain counselor uh, or I may just have to stop by a school when, we're, when school is open and we're allowed to travel like normal and say, hey, is there any way I could get X, Y, Z? And let me be an advocate for you throughout that process while you're trying to get your... Uh, college things together. As for the college ends during COVID right now, and I think the best thing that uh, came from COVID on the college end is that we've all become more flexible with technology. So now at all these colleges and universities, everyone had to scramble if they didn't have it already, everyone had to scramble to do virtual visits and online campus tours and all those different things. So now, even as we slowly transition back to whatever normal is going to look like in the future, all of those virtual options are still offered at all these colleges. So whether you're a freshman or a senior, uh, you can sign up and be sitting right at home and still get an experience of what all these state schools or what all these schools uh, probably around the country look like. You can still meet with the rep, meet your person, uh, still take virtual campus tours and everything. So that's a lot of neat things that are gonna be available for you guys that may not have been available for students in the past or where they actually had to drive seven hours if they were going to a school super far away and everything you guys could basically do everything right there on the computer and you could spend one day and probably go on five college visits in one day now because everything is done virtual and online and everything so that's something to keep in mind as well too if you just wanted to meet with someone really fast or anything along those lines i think when you um like when i think when i email amy there's a link at the bottom of yours about you want to schedule a meeting with me click here or whatever so people have those different things set up as well, too. So it is uh, some benefits that are coming from the COVID, especially on the college end of what we're doing to make things more flexible for you guys. Amy, would you mind if I add something real quick? Absolutely. Um, I just want to, and I, I know everybody out here knows how to email, but I also know how incredibly busy everybody gets. So just a quick little suggestion, especially if you're from a big high school, when you email your college counselor at your high school or you email the college rep, remember that they don't that they may not have met you yet. So to put an email that just says, can you meet with me? That is very challenging at a larger high school or at a university. Um, I, 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 you're, you know, just remember you're not texting, you know, just to say, you know, Miss so and so, Mr. So and so, could we please schedule an appointment and then put your name, you know, John Smith? And I know that takes a little bit more time, um, but it 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 can get lost in the shuffle. Like I I don't I don't know who they are, you know, especially on the college front. I have time to look up your email, but a university counselor won't. Um, one other quick suggestion in the subject line, I have my students that are emailing college reps, but the high school. So I suggest to them every time they're emailing um, Ms. Hofsteller, they put St. Xavier Louisville. Um, and if they don't have to do that for me, but um, just a suggestion, just to keep in mind to put a little more detail in the email if you have a question, because just so we know who you are or your college counselor knows who you are. That is such good advice, Gary, because, <laughs> um, and especially on the college side, there are two St. Xavier's close by Louisville, one in Louisville and one in Cincinnati that 
you know, if a student, I can, I know obviously the St. Xavier Louisville uh, email at St. X Tigers, um, but I know those a little bit better now, but if you are able to tell us, give us a little bit more information about who you are, um, if you're in the application process, your student ID number for your institution is always really helpful, um, especially if you have a very common last name or something along those lines. Um, it's much easier for us to make sure that we, we get the right student information if we can pull it up you know, with, your, um, with your student ID number. Um, I will also tell you that my secret sauce when I go to a high school, especially if it's a new one, um, the administrative assistant is my BFF. Mm -hmm. uh, administrative assistants know everything. They also often keep candy on their desk. So, um, <laughs> so they are gonna be great, um, especially if you're maybe in a school where you switch, right? You switch every year. You have a counselor for a freshman year and then one for sophomore, then one for junior and one for senior. Um, so yeah, um, definitely butter up those um, administrative assistants. They'll take good care of you. Make sure you you get connected. And um, Kendrick, I love your advice. Um, you know, reach out to any of us. We're all here to help you. We, most of us do know each other in some capacity. We can connect you, you know, um, all the way around. Okay, what are some things that students should not do when communicating with college counselors? Short email, Carrie started this. You guys are so good. You have, it's like you're in my brain. You have the line of all of them, <laughs> great questions. Um, a little more detail in emails, that sort of thing. What are some things that students should not do in communications? There, uh, I think when it comes to communication, by and large, most students are great. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys know what you're doing and everything, but there are certain things that can come up. Like, for instance, uh, I've seen it, uh, maybe this is two weeks ago, uh, when like when a college calls you or anything on the phone and you uh, are answering the phone to speak to a college, and then like maybe... Uh, you hang up or something along those lines with just not, I think just the proper uh, etiquette, like at any school, if you're not interested in a college, like your best route to say, hey, I'm going to XYZ, I'm going to another school. And that way they can take you off the, their list and everything along those lines. But we had, uh, I had a student that hung up on me and then his mom called uh, the uh, scholarship office the next week and wondered why he had lost his scholarship. Well, when he hung up, I took it as he's not interested in the university because I presented myself to him. So those miscommunications can happen and everything along those lines. So never be afraid. And I know it's, uh, again, you're always like, oh my God, I don't want them to be mad at me or anything along those lines, but never be afraid to just let people know where you are throughout the different processes as it pertains to college and your high schools as well. Let your counselors know where you are throughout these processes so everyone can help and keep you on the right track. Yeah, to echo what Kendrick was saying is don't not communicate with your college reps. So if you apply to five, six, seven, eight different colleges, you can't go to five, six, seven, eight different colleges. You're going to go to one. So it's really important that when the time comes that you do decide what schools that you're really considering, you know, just as a courtesy, let those college reps know that you're looking to not enroll. Um, going back to like to the email conversation before, <clears throat> always be uh, thinking of an email address that you would create, like Amy had said, for just college communication only and making sure that it's like an appropriate name of the, the email address. Um, that's always good. And also make sure that um, uh, when communicating with college reps, you also have somehow your and I know we talked about this before the meeting, but having your parents also have access to that email address as well. Because um, again, you're probably busy as a student too, but have you know somebody else have access to that email saying, hey, did you see the scholarship come through? The deadline's coming up here soon. Just I'm gonna be able to have like a checks and balances for you. Um, so those are just a couple of things I'd like to mention. I think too, um, a lot of students don't realize this. I, I, ha I ran into this situation recently when if you are a student on here that's taken the PSAT already, or if you are um, taking the ACT or any standardized test, you may not have known this, but you checked a box. You may have checked a box 
that allows universities to send you information. So yes, at a college fair, yes, um, at a campus visit, but they can also get your email address from those testing sites. And um, I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna get a ton of email, a ton of email. So a new email address works. Um, our, some of our students, we try to suggest they create files for the top 10 schools that they like and keep moving emails into their files. Um, I think that's what they're called, right? Electronic files, yeah. Um, I think the other thing, but I, I have had this situation where a student, student email back, you know, in very bold letters and not very nice, stop sending me emails. That's not your best idea. Um, and that, that email came back to me from the university um, from the university rep. So if you want to stop getting emails, you can reach out politely and just tell the university you're no longer interested. But just remember, um, again, you don't have to worry about being like super formal. Everybody's so nice at a college. I mean, they're really nice people. But at the same time, you you do want to email them with some detail and email them you know, and, and be polite and, and ask for what you need and they will help you. And I, and just to kind of echo what everyone has said, um, but I think also keeping in mind, I'm not, someone said this, it might've been Kendrick or Billy, I'm not, I don't remember, um, but keep in mind too, that a lot of times your college reps are kind of your representative, right? So um, if you're applying to maybe, um, a college that maybe doesn't accept a lot of people, or maybe they just have a more selective process. I think keep in mind too, that you want to kind of keep a pretty decent relationship with your admissions rep. Um, because if you start off on the wrong foot, it's really hard to get that back from the college rep, just because you have to keep in mind too, that we're working with a lot of different students from a lot of different places. Um, so especially, 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 if you're applying for um, a really big scholarship at that institution, a lot of times it's usually us who are going to the scholarship committee and saying, hey, I know um, Sally Smith. She's a really great student. She is very receptive. She emails me back pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and so just keep in mind, too, that a lot of times we kind of are your representative for the school. So anytime that you know, you want those bigger scholarships or um, anything having to do with admission, we're kind of your go-to person. And we're, I, I don't want to say that we're make it or break it type of people, but also at the same time, again, keep in mind um, that we have a lot of students that we work with. And so you want to make sure that you keep that relationship with your college rep um, as respectful as possible. Um, because also, like Carrie said, we love talking to you guys. Um, I always tell my students, hey, I don't have a job without you guys. So please always feel free. Reach out to us, email us, call us, text us. Um, you will not annoy us, I promise. Um, it's our job. We're used to it. But just keep that door open at all times. Um, be polite. Everyone has bad days. So if you do, that's okay. Um, but just keep in mind, too, that we are human as well. And so um, we also don't like it when people aren't that nice to us. Uh, <laughs> but again, like I said, just keep in mind um, that we do kind of, depending on the institution, have a lot to do with, like I said, the admissions and scholarship and financial aid process. Yes. I think the other thing that I would just want to add on to this is that um, we... I know when I talk to students, I try to think about how I can enhance their college experience through the process. So if there's any information that you give me that tells me, oh, this person is going to be great as a tour guide, or this person is going to be great in this organization, or this student should definitely get connected to this other group of organizations that is, um, you know, so incredible and does this amazing work that they also like to do. Um, we are, you know, admissions counselors in general. Um, I don't like to think of us as the gatekeepers. We are the openers, you know, we're the, the conduits, right, of your connection between high school and college. So, you know, if, if you email Karina and you're like, 
oh my gosh, I'm super interested in X, Y, or Z. And Karina thinks, oh my gosh, I know the president of that club. Let me make sure that I get them connected now so that that student, prospective student who's coming in can get that insight from, you know, what that student is involved with and, and all of these things. Um, especially if you think that your um, program or, or you know that your program or what you're interested in is kind of niche, like let us help you make those connections um, in a, you know, at U of, a U of L, for example, in a larger environment. Um, so Delaney had a question. Good. This is a really good question, Delaney. Um, any advice for interest in an athletic program that a college offers? Um, so communication, of course, Delaney, you probably know this looks a little bit different depending on the division. Um, so on the plus, so I can't talk to you about it from D1, but you've got some fantastic folks that can, um, can talk to you from the high school side as well as um, from the college side as well. Yeah, typically you'll find yeah. Delaney that, um, you know, the college admissions counselor is going to defer you to the coach. Like the idea is that for them to be able to determine, you know, how great of an athlete you are and what your playing time would be and things like that. It's really kind of having that communication with the coach. Um, and again, to Amy's point, depending upon what, what uh, division it is, uh, NAIA, D1, D2, D3. Um, so my advice that I always give to students is making sure that you have a conversation with your current coach <clears throat> and to say, hey, where did they feel like that you would be a good fit for? Like athletically, they're around you for however long they've been around you. They know where you might be a good fit for what division. Uh, and then to be able to put yourself out there um, and communicate with the actual coaches itself, going to the athletic side and email them. Once you show that interest, that allows them to be able to start kind of communicating with you. Um, we always tell students, share with them your schedule um, typically they're going to be, uh, looking at more like club select type stuff more so than high school. Um, but they might be able to get a chance to come to some of your high school games as well. Um, so those are just a couple of things I mentioned. I'll let, I'll let Carrie add in some things too. No, Billy, thank you. Um, I work at a high school with a lot of collegiate athletes. Um, and that is a big part of my job. Um, division one, division two, II, division three, and NAIA. So we work with a lot of athletes in their junior year. And our first step is like, um, it's, I always, I'm sure, do you sure you're wonderful, but I have no idea how good you are or where you can play. I'm going to say you can play at Duke and I don't even know. Like, I have no idea, right? So I will say to those athletes, you know, you talk to your coach, find out where you can play, find out where the interest is. My role, and for a lot of you, I think you would need to find out with your college counselor, my role is to help them with the admissions piece, right? Because um, you need to make sure you're, you're connecting with the athletic department, and the admissions department, because let's say you're good enough to play football for um, Stanford University. Um, probably the coach at Stanford University is helping you a ton if you're that good, right? Or you can swim at um, University of Southern California, which I, I have, we have had those. Um, I have very little role in that. You know, the student will say to me, this is where I'm swimming. And then I help them with the application process. If you're an athlete that is still trying to search for someone to be interested in you, then I think you need to make sure you're in contact with your current coach, your coach at the college that you're interested in. And also make sure that all the pieces are falling together to get in that university. And that's where the high school counselor can help you out. So um, just because you want to play somewhere, doesn't mean you're going to get in, right? So you need to make sure that's one of my biggest jobs is to make sure if a student is interested in these five schools to play lacrosse, then he shares those five schools with me. And then we talk about the admissions process with those five schools. And um, that becomes very important. And I share with my students kind of a green light, yellow light, red light. Um, 
if you're if a division one coach or a division two coach is coming after you hard, you're gonna know it. You're gonna know it. And they're gonna say to you, we're offering you a spot. We've cleared you with admissions. That's a green light. I'm just helping you get the transcript. Yellow light may be a coach says, hey, you know, we need to see this, this test score higher, this GPA a little higher. Let's see what there's a space next year. You know, let's, let's stay in touch, let's stay in touch. That's yellow light that I need to work with that student on the admissions requirements. Can you get in with or without that sport? What I call red lighting is student comes to me and says, hey, Ms. Foster, they've got a spot for me if I can get in. Well, then we need to talk strictly admissions. Can you get in? Okay, so I know that's a whole big answer, but um, I think step one, don't be shy to say how good you are. I need my students to tell me how good they are. I need them to tell me. And you're, if you're an athlete, you know, you know, the boys will say, I, I think I can play small division one. I think I can play division one. Ms. Foster, I'm gonna be playing division three. Whatever it is, we start there. Then we get, make sure you are contacting your current coach and talk to your current coach about your ability and where you can play. And then make sure you are clear of where you stand through the admissions office with that university. And Delaney, that should be the role of your school counselor, your college counselor should help you with that piece. Um, for instance, I've worked with Karina a ton with Center for you know, Football Players. Um, and and that, that, those conversations um, should be expected. Um, if you're looking to play at a very select university, the admissions office should expect those conversations. So don't be embarrassed by any questions. I tell my students all the time, if the, stu if the school is kind of select, to say, how do I look through admissions? If that makes you nervous, mom or dad could ask. Someone should ask that question. If you already know how you look through admissions, woohoo, you got to step over with. But if you don't, you got to know, okay? And, and somebody will be able to help you. And Delaney, it looks like that you had mentioned earlier that you're actually a junior in high school right now. Is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, depending upon the sport at this stage in the game, you know, for some of the students that we have in my high school, um, we have a sophomore that's already committed D1 and they're doing volleyball, for example. So the idea is like for them <clears throat> having that conversation as a junior, they depend upon like your athletic ability and what sport you want to get into, you know, you might be in a position where you're limited on options in some of the schools. Um, the one other thing to kind of think about too is that, you know, colleges, they deal with a budget, whether it's admissions or athletics or food services, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they all have a budget they're working with. So the idea is that if there's a way that academically you can do the right things in the classroom, and also outside the desk, like building up your resume and trying to be able to get some university admissions money. Um, that means it's less money. The athletic department might have to be able to throw your way if they do athletic scholarships. Um, so it's just kind of always students is across the board and obviously with Delaney as well, you know, just try to take a look at where you can be able to get some extra cash from other places. I will also say, um, and I've worked with a lot of Carrie's amazing guys, um, if you are a preferred walk-on, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. You still have to go through me and Karina and Kendrick, right? So you still have to go through the admissions process. Even if the coach is like, yeah, we can't wait to have you on the team, da, 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 your preferred walk-on. You still, like Carrie said, that would kind of be your like yellow light to red light situation <laughs> where you still have to make sure that you meet the admissions criteria for um, the institution overall or your program, you know, some institutions you have to get into the, you know, your specific program or whatever. Um, so 
you know, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I know preferred walk-on is, is a big thing that, that comes through, um, especially UFL football. They love preferred walk-ons. So, <laughs> um, so there was another question um, about cheerleading, and I can speak a little bit about the University of Louisville. Um, for UFL, uh, cheerleading is a spirit team. So cheerleading and dance, the so ladybirds and the um, cheer team are spirit. Um, they can, they will recruit you. You typically have to come and try out. Um, but more often than not, you're still coming through us. You're not, it's not like a D1 clearinghouse sort of situation in the same way as it is, um, with some of our other D1 sports. So our cheer team is incredibly competitive. Our dance team is incredibly competitive. Um, they do offer some scholarships, um, but typically you're still coming through like the regular admissions process with us in that case, because it's spirit, not D1, which is a weird distinction that's made. Any other thoughts about, um, about athletics? Thanks, Carrie. That was a really, Carrie and Billy, that was, those were really good answers. Delaney, did that help? Uh, yeah. So I'm a competitive cheerleader. So I was going to ask you about the spirit program. Um, is it much more difficult if you're out of state to be um, a part of that team or is it just about the same if you're in Kentucky? No, I would say it's about the same. I mean, our, our cheer, listen, the cheer team and the dance team, we don't care where you're from. If you're the best, we want you on the team. Um, and yeah. essentially like that is kind of how it is. Um, but that all being said, um, I think our, our uh, single gender tier team just bought home their seventh championship so they are really like yeah, like the competition has kind of ratcheted up right <laughs> um <laughs> so um so yeah so definitely like but the, so those teams are really competitive uh, but you've got an awesome group of of scholars I mean they they are really competitive in the classroom they're competitive in their major um, and they're com competitive when they, um, when they get to go around and compete as well, um, or if they're cheering at a game or dancing at a game. So um, definitely uh, very competitive, but typically you go through the same process as a regular student. Um, and I, I don't know, uh, for Carrie, you might know this better than I would because I'm the junior counselor and typically our senior counselor deals with like um, the eligibility center and all that stuff. Carrie, am I correct in saying that based upon what your grade point average would determine what is the ACT composite score you would need to be eligible to go through the eligibility center? So like higher, I'm going to say this, but you want them to both be high, higher GPA, ACT doesn't need to be as high, lower GPA, ACT needs to be higher. Um, yeah, yeah. Right now, though, the NCAA um, is the ACT is test optional. So um, for the next school year, so um, we the test is not part of that process. But we'll, yes, to to your question, it's a sliding scale. So the higher your GPA, the quote unquote lower your test score is able to be. And it's a sum score. So you add um, all four of the subjects to get that score. If you go on to NCAA's eligibility center uh, site, um, excuse me, they will have that sliding scale. It's very easy to read. It literally is your core GPA and then your test score that you need to be eligible. Um, we run core GPAs at our high school. If your high school does not do that or does not have the time to do that, the coach at the university will help you know if you're cleared. If any athlete is out here that's a junior, the coach may have already asked to see your transcript. That's why um, they're checking to see your eligibility. Um, if you are a junior out here and you think you may play, I would recommend you to log on to the NCAA and get registered. There is a fee for that, but um, it, starting that process spring of junior year is important. If you think you might play NAIA, I would get on NAIA and register for that as well. 
Um, not sure we have the time tonight to go into what NCAA core GPA means, but um, it is on the NCAA site. Your college counselor would be familiar with it um, and the coach at the university would as well. Amy, I know that we're uh, getting a little bit shorter on, on time here and things like that, but the one thing that I wanted to add in, um, uh, if we can maybe fit this in, I don't know what other questions that you want to make sure that we covered, but with a majority of the population being sophomores and juniors, I don't know if there's something that, you know, Karina and Kendrick would like to add, and, you know, obviously Karen and I could be able to add in things as well. Like, what are some things that they need to be doing over the summer, going into the next school year, being ready when they start filling out you know, the common application or university um, application, scholarship preparation, things like that to make their applications look really attractive. So um, I just know that that's a, a thing that I have to really work with students on quite a bit in my role. Um, so I don't know if that's something that you hit on your list or Kendrick or Karina could be able to add uh, more on to. This is why this panel, this is why this panel has come together. That was literally gonna be my final question because we are, most of us, um, in the next six weeks or so, wrapping up the current year that we're in, right? So in thinking about next steps, um, what should students be doing um, in terms of, uh, from both sides, right? From the college side and the professional school counselor side, which at this point we kind of merge right we kind of are talking to each other so much more um but what are some of the next steps that um these students should be thinking about going from freshman year to sophomore year or sophomore year to junior year or even junior year to senior year um as we are thinking college now well really I, quick oh, then i'm okay, sorry karina no it kind ahead. of ties into the questions that were just added in the chat as well about world languages like korean and everything First off, as it pertains to languages, most colleges are gonna have a, a wide scope of languages out there. The best thing you can do for yourself is kind of just do your own research about the schools you're interested in, checking to see what language they have to offer. You may just be able to Google colleges that offer Korean or whatever language you want to, but all these schools offer different languages. But that ties in by kind of the first thing you guys can start doing. And I know it's hard right now at your age, but starting to kind of get an idea of what you may wanna study in college. Because if you can get to the point to where you're lucky enough, and again, uh, there are a lot of students who do come in undeclared and that's fine. But if you do know what you want to study, that can kind of dictate what type of programming and everything you're gonna be doing over the summer. Like if you know you want to be a nurse or anything along those lines, now you're gonna start kind of looking for programming and things that maybe have to do with nursing or anything along those lines over the summer that's gonna help you get more prepared and going to fluff up that resume from when you're applying to colleges and when you're applying to programs such as nursing that may require an extra admissions application later when it's time to uh, get into that college. So just building that resume. Uh, I know people from Kentucky, you may know what a GSP is and everything along those lines, but getting involved in different programs like that that show that not only were you great academically, but you were also super involved in your environment through charities, through your church work or wherever else, everything along those lines, because those play a huge role, especially when we're sitting down and we're discussing admissions. If it's a super competitive school and they're trying to figure out, should we accept this student? Or when it comes to, okay, you've been accepted. Now let's look at how, how this student qualifies for scholarships. The more that you've been involved in, the more that's gonna help you out when it comes to scholarships and admissions as well. And it starts right now. It's uh, I hate to see the juniors who have to try to cram everything in that one summer. If you're younger than the junior and you can start right now building that resume, it's gonna make it a lot easier when you're a senior. Uh, the good thing about it as well as that, I mean, a lot of times students are scared to brag on yourself. To be honest, when you're going to college, this is the time to be the most, brag per, uh, most braggadocious person ever. Brag on yourself on all these college uh, essays, resumes, and all these different things because we want to know what you want to do. And I guarantee you, if you're not bragging on yourself, the next student is bragging on them. So uh, again, that's something to keep in mind too as well while you're doing all these activities. Uh, if you need some help, mom and dad are usually pretty good at bragging on their kids. So <laughs> let them help you fill out some things then. Yeah, definitely what Kendrick has said. Um, and I guess I'll start like with, if you are a freshman or a sophomore um, and you may have heard this before, but I would say, 
to make sure that you start off strong. So make sure that your GPA starts off strong, especially if you know that you may possibly be wanting to apply to a more selective university or college. Make sure that you are really taking advantage of any kind of opportunities that you may have on the academic side and make sure that you keep your GPA up throughout your high school career, um, because that can really come back. And, you know, a lot of times when you're looking at transcripts for admission, we look at everything, right? So we're looking at your freshman year, your sophomore year, junior year, um, and then sometimes part of your senior year as well. Um, so make sure that you do keep your GPA as high as possible um, and making sure that you're taking the classes that are needed. Um, also, I would say, which I know we're in COVID, well, hopefully we're on the upswing, um, but also if you can start just looking at any kind of college or university that you think you may be interested in. So start to look at some of the things they have to offer and really try and decide what it is that you want. So do you want a big school? Do you want a small school? Um, what are some of the deciding factors that you think will come into play when you kind of get into your junior and senior year and really start narrowing down that list? Um, and then also, if you're comfortable and if the colleges, I know some, not many, I know some colleges are doing a few in-person tours here and there. So if you are able to do that, take advantage of those. Um, if you're able to do that, great. And if you can't, there's a lot of virtual options that you can take advantage of and check out. Um, and then I would say for juniors slash rising seniors, what I would say is make sure that when you're applying to these schools that you're taking your application seriously, um, because so many times we run into applications where you can kind of just see that the student did not take it seriously. Um, and so what I mean by that is making sure that if you have an essay that's required, which if you're doing the common app, you may or may not. Um, make sure that someone is looking at it with you. Um, and that could be your school counselor, that could be a teacher that you trust, anyone along those lines. Make sure that someone's looking at that essay before you submit it. Um, and then also making sure that your recommendations that you have lined up whether that be a teacher, your counselor, whoever that may be, um, make sure that they really know who you are and are able to point out those really great qualities. Because a lot of times when we're going through applications um, and we're looking at, I know some schools don't do RECs, um, but we still do. Um, so if you do have, if you are applying to a school that does require recommendations, just make sure that that person who is writing the recommendation is able to really highlight the really great qualities about you. Because when we're going through, we're seeing hundreds and hundreds of different applications. And so sometimes even that one teacher or counselor recommendation that is a spectacular recommendation, really, really helps us um, and really kind of captures who you are as a person. Um, so again, making sure that if you're a junior or a senior, that you're taking that application seriously, keep your GPA up, um, and then also stay in contact with, of course, your school counselor and the college reps as well. Just make sure that you keep that line of communication open junior, senior year. Yeah, amen to all of that. I echo all of that. I, I will say a couple of things that come to mind in, in, in the environment that I'm working in. So um, if, if you're blessed enough to know I want to be a social worker, a nurse, engineer, uh, Kendrick, you, I agree. You, that's great. But what can happen, though, is if you hear your friends saying that and you're like, well, I don't know, and then you just shut down. We don't want that, right? We don't want that. So if you're out here today and you're like, well, I don't know, that's okay. That's okay. Start with what you do know. Start looking at, well, I like math a lot, or I like English a lot, or I like to write a lot, or I really like to help people. Start with what you do know. Don't worry about what you don't know, because that can be overwhelming for me, for adults, right? Also, I think it's a great time. Um, I always tell my students when you're visiting a campus, 
um, virtually or otherwise, you are living there. You are living and learning there. I guarantee you, you're going to have fun. I would not make that a top priority of choosing your school. You're going to have fun. Okay. So I have had so many students have said, well, I didn't really realize that it was a small town. Well, it didn't change when you went to visit, right? So when you go to that campus, look around you, could you live there? And I think that's really important when you're visiting campuses. Could you live there? Could you learn there? And I think thirdly, um, I, I would really caution on hurrying up and building your resume with a whole bunch of little things. Um, I think you want to say, what I talk to my students about is what makes you interesting? How are you engaging in your community? How are you engaging in the world? Do you know about your community? Do you know about the world around you? If you don't, and I'm sure a lot of do, young people do, but listen to some podcasts, read some informative articles, be engaged with your community, have an informed opinion. And a formed opinion does not necessarily mean what you read on social media, but an informed opinion. That's going to help with your essays, your interviews, your conversations. It's what makes you interesting. And what makes you interesting makes for a great application. So it becomes from your authentic you. And that starts any day you wanted to start. What makes me interesting? And go from there. Guitar, piano, activist, basketball player, artist, music, whatever it is, start there. So uh, I, I have a couple of things that I'll, I'll mention and kind of branch off of what the other people have just already mentioned. You know, Karina had talked about the importance of trying to be able to keep a strong GPA. Um, you know, and one of the things with that is that's when you look at academic rigor, it's a matter of like the level of courses you take. Um, whether it's like a, a accelerated honors or AP dual credit type schedule. Uh, the one thing that some students feel like they need to do is saying, well, I really didn't take many honors or AP classes as a freshman or sophomore. I'm going to take a whole bunch as a junior and a senior. You have to be really careful with what classes you take uh, because ideas you don't want to take classes that uh, are going to be too overwhelming. You can't handle that workload and that would really affect your GPA. So just be kind of careful with that kind of stuff with your class schedule. Uh, speaking of class schedules, it is so important to make sure you pick classes that align with what you might want to study in college. If you're interested in physical therapy, you're interested in nursing, uh, the idea of not taking a science class in your senior year, it's probably a bad idea. Uh, you want to make sure that you look at anatomy and physics and, and other types of classes your school might offer that, like I said, would align with your major. So make sure, because again, a lot of you are probably have already handed in your schedules for next year, or you're still working through that process like my high school is. Uh, meet with your counselor or even talk, chat with the admissions rep and see kind of kind of what they say. Um, the one thing I want to give props to for, you know, the universities and what they've been really um, uh, changing over the years is using this term holistic. They're taking a holistic view in how they're admitting students to their university. And even more so this year than ever before with schools that are doing what's called test optional, um, meaning that it's up to you if you wanna be able to submit your test score to that university for admission. Test optional might be different when it comes to applying to the college within the university or being considered for scholarships or whatever. Your high school counselor will be able to be letting you know strategically what schools that you would submit your test scores to if they're test optional schools. Um, but if, if, if you submit your test scores or not, they're looking at academic rigor, GPA, uh, your resume, which I'll talk about here in a second, your test scores, letters of recommendation, college essay. The one thing that every single high school has, clubs and organizations, they have athletics. So you have students that are involved. They have, they have community service on their resume. The one thing that I've found from chat with college reps and also students I work with in my high school is leadership. Leadership is something that a lot of students, it's not that you're not leaders. It's just a matter of you're not sure what leadership you wanna be able to put on your resume. And what universities are really looking for is not a leadership title. It's more so leadership characteristics. 
like showing them that you have leadership and doing that within your community, not necessarily always your school, but outside the community, they really want to see that. Um, the college essay, that is my favorite part of working with students on the college process. That is the most unique piece of your application as a whole. Like I said, students are all taking English, math, science. They might have a resume. They're gonna have a teacher that's gonna say, it's the best student I ever taught. <laughs> but the idea is that college essay, that is the one thing that the way that you answer that, it's black lettering on white paper. How do you somehow find a way to be able to write a college essay in a certain way to where you're presenting yourself to the admissions rep and saying, I'm more than a transcript. I am more than a resume. Let me tell you about me through this essay. That's the thing that they're really looking for. Last thing I'm gonna mention, because I've talked a whole bunch here. I just worked with uh, a student where I was able to help them figure out if they want to do interior design. And then another student who was interested, um, which I thought was really cool being a wedding planner. So I was able to help place these two students in the job shadow experiences through people that I know that are interior designers, uh, which I need to have them work in my crib. Uh, but then also uh, a wedding planner, because also being a counselor, I'm also a DJ. So the idea is I know a lot of wedding planners as well. So I was able to link up those students through these job shadow experiences Students, it is so important to you to talk to your parents and tell them what you're interested in doing and see if they can kind of help place you into a job shadow experience and make sure that's what you might want to study in college or do as a profession. So take advantage of that time this summer um, or the following summer, depending upon when you graduate, and try to see if that's something you might want to do. Sorry. Thank you so much, panel. Um, thank you all so much for being here this evening. We have wrapped up um, this session, I do want to quickly mention that um, if you are considering colleges, um, especially in Kentucky or across the U.S., make sure that you know who is there to support you at your college. Um, so all of us have an, every college has an admissions counselor, I promise. They at least have an administrative assistant that you can definitely find for sure um, and can get you connected. Um, make sure that you're checking out college tours, hopefully um, see what your state or your city is doing for college fairs, getting connected with, um, with colleges. Um, as the panelists mentioned earlier, I don't think that this virtual thing is going to go away. So um, if you do wanna get in contact with your um, admissions counselor at any given place, uh, make sure you just reach out. They can tell you about all the resources at their specific school. They're gonna be their experts. Reach out to your professional school counselor, they are so awesome and they're fantastic advocates for you as it relates to college um, and, and moving through the rest of this process. Also take a collective deep breath. It has been a wild year um, and we just, um, we know that this is a crazy process and it will give you some great material to write about in your college essay, like Billy mentioned. Um, so thank you all so, 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 so much. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, students, for being with us. Um, I'm gonna stick for a couple of minutes. Um, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to, to stick around. But other than that, I'm gonna stop the recording um, and we'll see you soon. Students, wish you all the best.